Hello guys, this is Mike from mcprogramming.org. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about a new way of handling an exception. This is very similar to the try-catch block, which it actually is a try-catch block, but it has one more component to it, and it's the finally clause, which comes right after the last uh, catch clause. But in order for me to make a very good example, I'm going to kind of come off the top of my head with this, I'm going to code some something out that where this finally clause might be useful and also I'm going to show you how you can have multiple catch clauses so I want to make a private static int numbers array because I plan on having to throw the index or array index out of bounds exception which is a uh, unchecked exception but you can handle it if you really want to so let's say new int and I'm going to initialize it to be a size 5 so if you start putting stuff in there that is more than 5 elements it's going to throw that exception so let's go down into here and let me I'm going to actually create a file so it won't throw the file not found exception because I want it to throw this exception. So let me see. To write a file within your project, you go to New and go to File and go to the project you're on and go to. Or actually, just click that. Let's say. Um, numbers dot text make sure you add the dot text or this will not work it won't read as a text file and then in here I'm just gonna put a couple numbers just more than five numbers is all you need save that and when you look into your directory now this should line up with the the first um, level right underneath of the project. It shouldn't be within the source folder or anything like that. So now let's go to the driver class and I believe these are from other videos. So now let's say string file name equals what did I call it? Numbers dot text and instead of creating a file and a scanner. Let's. I'm gonna show you how to combine that. We're going to say scanner. No, I'm actually gonna make a private static scanner variable type up here, and then I'll instantiate it in the main method. Private scanner. Private static scanner. Maybe static scanner uh, input. All right. Very valid and now let's say input and we're going to assign it to a scan a new scanner object new scanner and in the scanner parameters it can take a file so instead of having to create file you know whatever you call it equals new file and then throw in some string which would have been file name we can make a shortcut and just instantiate a new file right here that takes in file name. That's the short way of doing it. Okay, so now here you go. You gotta handle this. So let's surround it with a try catch and get rid of this. Let's get rid of both of these lines. To get rid of a line, just click the line you're on and you can say Control D. That'll get rid of everything on that line for you. Um, let's say file not found exception system dot out dot print line could not find file and we'll just say file name all right well let's because of this uh, text file has numbers in it let's run through iterate through that file and assign each number in there to this array so what we want to do is we need an index so let's say int index equals zero and we're going to 
iterate through this. Let's say while input dot has next while it has another element in there. We're going to run this code and we are going to say numbers and we're going to have to put index in here because it starts at zero and so numbers at place zero place wouldn't be a good word I'd say at index zero equals input dot next int alright and you're gonna definitely need to increment that or else you're gonna keep assigning each uh, number to array index zero so what this is gonna do is it's gonna read this file of numbers and every time it reads a new number it's going to assign it to a place in here so the, because you know that there are I don't care how many there are but there are five more then or it fits five in there and there's definitely more than five so it's going to throw a uh, uh, an array index out of bounds exception so we can catch it in here if we really want say array index out of bounds exception I believe that's how it's spelled out we'll just say AE for this one we can catch this let's say system dot dot point line try to add too many numbers to array all right so what the finally catch is is if we we opened up this input right here and let's see what happens if I take the static off for a second okay, so we need the static for right now I'm gonna try to show you something but um, let me try this Okay, well that's weird. Usually there'll be a little yellow line under here saying that input was never closed. That was going to be my finally catch, but we can still do that. Let's just say finally and curly brackets and we would have said input dot close. Initialize variable. Okay, so input equals null. So what I just did was I just pretty much moved the scanner down into here, so you don't have to have private or static. It's within the same method, and I didn't assign it down here, uh, scanner, because if I did that, then well, let's just I'll just show you what happens if I did that. down here it will say that it can't find it okay now what this does is it will run through the try catch and it will try to create the scanner that reads the file and it will iterate through each time adding numbers into the array and it shouldn't throw this exception because I created the file so it will find the file but it will throw this arrays index out of bounds exception so it should print out tried to add too many numbers to array and it will print that down here and then it's always a good thing when any time you have any IO to close the input or the output so we closed it but let's just make sure that it is getting to this finally clause and let's system.println um, input closed Okay, let's do this. See, it said try to add too many numbers to array, input closed. And that's basically what a finally catch is used for is when it needs to execute some code regardless of if the code is um, caught or if it actually goes through. So that's what the finally catch is. And this, you can have multiple catch clauses 
um, you can there's ways of putting multiple catch clauses in the parameter it's not it's a, it's a little harder to read sometimes so I like to stack them on top of each other so thank you all very much for watching and please subscribe